Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna be unboxing the Maker Crate. I always get so excited when this comes in the mail. Almost, I think, as excited as my kids when all the other crates come in the mail. So I'm really excited to unbox this with you today. So if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you unboxings, which is what we're doing today, to give you different curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button and let's open this crate. Okay, so this month with the crate, we're doing Batik wrapping cloth. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. My daughter had something also that was Batik. I think it has to do with the dyeing of the fabric and I don't know if I'm saying it the right way, so I'm sorry if I'm not. Someone let me know down below how you say it. It says dye fabric through the traditional art of Batik, then turn your colorful cloths into gift wrapped. Gift wrapped, wrap. <laughs> not, there's no tea at the end. That should be interesting. I don't know how my gift wrapping, wrapped, why can't I say it the right way guys? My gift wrapping skills are with cloth. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna try to hold this up for you guys, it's so big. But that's what it looks like. So the cloth, <laughs> as long as nothing else falls out. So the different cloths that we're gonna dye and then these ones are wrapped around something. So we can wrap them, wrap a present with them. So this is really cute though. I think that's adorable. I think this idea would just be cute as a decor, not necessarily like a present underneath, but even if you just had a wood block or something, you could wrap and then use this as some sort of home decor. I think that would be really cute. So this doesn't have our instructions in it. You have to go to the link, which is always provided right over here, or you can scan it. And then it has a bunch of ideas. So some of these are super cute. I really like that one as well. And I'm excited to try this out. I feel like it sort of worked with my daughter. I don't think that the dye took as well or we put too much or something. So we didn't get as much of the design. So hopefully this will work better, but there's some more ideas in there. And then we have our gloves, because obviously gloves are important. And then soy wax. I wonder if we're gonna use that to draw the designs right here and then when you dye it, that part doesn't dye it, which if I'm remembering correctly, my daughter used rubber bands, but when I was reading about Batik art dyeing, however you say it, again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know that much about it, but originally I think they do use wax on the cloth and then they dye the cloth and then the wax doesn't dye. And so that'll be interesting. This is a pretty big bag too. And then we have all the little dyes. So this is yellow and maybe a blue. I don't know, I can't see. I can't see what it's what it says at the top. Yes, this one's blue. So these are cute little containers too that would be fun to wash out afterward and use them for homeschool like paper clips maybe. This might be red. No, this is orange. So that one's orange, black maybe? I don't know, teal. Oh, who knew? I'm like, I feel like teal would be a fun color. It's just not, I don't know, it's kind of random with all the other colors being so normal. And then we have this cute little measure cup thing. And then we have our fabric squares right here that we get to use. And I'm guessing this is, I don't know, maybe this is bags or something. Maybe. They might be bags so that you can dye it within the bag and not make a mess everywhere. So that's what I'm assuming that those are as bags. And then, I don't know if this is a box to practice, like you can wrap something in this box, you know, put something in here to wrap. My daughter's birthday is coming up, so maybe we'll practice with that. And then there's a whole bunch of wax paper in here. <laughs> like, this is way more than they normally give us, probably because they know I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs> and so that's probably to put down so we don't get a mess everywhere. This says Batik tools. So let me see if I can get this open. Sometimes the tape cooperates with me. Other times it doesn't. So we open this up. There's a few different tools in here. So we have some popsicle sticks and then these are like tweezers, but they're made of wood. They look like popsicle sticks. There's a little measure right here. We have a paint brush, just one of those foam ones. And then, whoa, whoa, guys, I don't even know what to say about this. Do you see that? It has like this pointed end, but it has a hole here. So I wonder if you like put the wax in here and then do some, I don't know, this is gonna be cool. <laughs> I'm just seeing this, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. And then a little teeny paintbrush. 
So that's what's in here. This is exciting. Like I said, my daughter did something similar, but it was a lot simplified because it was for younger kids. So this seems a little bit more complicated and maybe more like the real thing. If you've done it before, let me know down in the comments and if this is similar to the real thing. <laughs> so I'm gonna get working on this project and I will let you know how it goes. I think that's how they say it in the videos. <laughs> Wrapping cloths and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. There were some things that <laughs> it's a little bit difficult. It's a skill that I have never used before and so it had a little bit of a learning curve but I'm going to show you the projects I made and just kind of explain some of my thoughts about it. So first of all I'm going to show you I wrapped this up so they have all the instructions for putting the wax on the cloth, for dyeing the cloth, and then for wrapping different styles and stuff like that. And so I wrapped this up. So this is the little box that they provide you with. I'll show you in a minute. So that's what that looks like. And it actually wasn't too hard to do. And you can use this technique for wrapping for several different projects. For smaller boxes, you could do bigger boxes if you use the big cloth, which is this one. And I'll show you that more in a minute. And so then if you just unwrap it, <laughs> it's a present. Or I thought it'd be cute to just use this like home decor. You could do that, wrap up some boxes or even use this one and just display them in your house. That would also be cute. So this was just a simple box they gave, nothing super fancy, but if you wanted to use it to wrap a gift, you could do that as well. So this was one of the cloths that I made. As you can see, it kind of has this little zigzaggy pattern. Let me show you what I was going for. So they had some examples in the book and I thought this one looked kind of cool and would be something different to try because I was like, oh, maybe just I'll do dots with the wax or something, but this was something different. So I tried it and this tool takes a little bit of getting used to, obviously, like they said, and you can practice a ton. They have all this wax paper and you can just practice and practice as much as you want. I practiced a little bit and then I just got to work doing it and I still have lots of wax left over. It's all hardened in here with my popsicle stick. And so I did this pattern. The hardest part I feel like, as you can kind of see, is some places are super faint because trying to keep the right pressure on this tool as you go down in the same pressure is very difficult which adds to the design, but then you can see some spots obviously where it kind of pooled and, or where I started where the wax might've been fresh or a little bit hotter. And so it came out a lot faster. I feel, still feel like it turned out good. I wasn't sure if it was, if these faint parts were gonna show up or not, but you can still see them and it's still a fun design. So I enjoyed that one. Another one I did, these are both the small cloths. There's two small ones and a big one was this one and I think this one's really cool. Something I would recommend, they say that you can iron these cloths before you do any of the wax on them or you don't have to. I didn't iron them because they were like, oh, it's up to you. But I probably recommend doing it because this pooling that I got down the middle is coming from it not being ironed. So then the fold, you know, was right here. And as I would run the tool across, it would just pull in that area before I was able to drag it further away. So I would recommend ironing <laughs> if you don't want to get that pooling. So initially I had just done lines on this one. I did three lines then four lines with the two in the middle closer together. And then I decided I wanted to have this just be a solid white line. So I went back and filled this all in with wax. And so 
I think this one turned out really good. I like the color. This isn't a straight yellow. I mixed the yellow with some of this orange. I think it says it's orange, but it comes out like this. It's like a salmon color, I feel like. It's brighter before you rinse it out. And I actually like the other color, like the brighter color better. So I added a little bit of this one to here so it was not as bright, like sun yellow. <laughs> it was a little bit more orangey yellow. And I like how that turned out. And then the last one is the big one. So this big blue one that you could wrap something really big in. They show you can make like a little basket to carry apples and stuff on the videos or maybe a headband. I was trying to do that. This fabric is slightly thick. It's not like a scarf type of material. And so it's long enough. Like if you roll it up diagonally and put it around, it's plenty long to do it. It's just a little stiff. So I feel like it might be kind of hard to tie a knot in. But this one, I just did a whole bunch of little lines all across as I went through it. And I like how it turned out. I like the color of this one. And then you get some of the different like fading spots. So I think it's fun, it's unique, and you get a variety of looks depending on how you do it and how the paint color takes. And I really did like how they just have us paint on the different paints instead of dipping them because I feel like that just makes a bigger mess and I didn't really want to have to like dip them in a big bag. And I do still have some of the paint left over, like some of the, the powders for them. So if you wanted to make more, you could do that because like I said, there's plenty of wax. So you could, you could keep going with that. I didn't use the little paintbrush they gave. I just used the big spongy one because so this is for very detailed designs, which they do have a few of these in here. Like if you're trying to paint in this type of a design, you'd want the smaller paintbrush. And then these are the containers. Like I said, they clean out really well and you could use them as storage for something else. Like in your homeschool room, I think that would be cute. Paper clips or just small little like push pins and stuff could go in these because there's four of those. And then I wanted to mention rinsing them out because that was kind of like my biggest fear <laughs> in doing this as I watched the video. When you rinse them out, you put them in this boiling bag that comes with the crate and you put them in a microwave safe bowl. And then you're supposed to fill it with water and then put it in the microwave and let it boil. But then you have to find this like perfect timing where the wax has melted, but your dyes aren't bleeding in to the white you created in your pattern. And so I was worried, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna just turn the whole thing the same color because the wax is gonna melt and I'm gonna leave it in there too long. And so I actually rinsed them all out with cold water before I put them in hot water just to try to get as much residual dye out of them as I could. And then I put them in the boiling bag and I just heated up water in like a Pyrex uh, liquid measuring cup that's what they're called and so I just put that in the microwave and then I poured it on the top of this and it happens really quick the wax floats up and it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be I was just so worried I was gonna just dye them completely the same color and so you see the little bubbles of wax and then you can just zush it around and then pull it out but another thing that's important to remember is when you're rinsing rinse it with slightly warm water at the beginning because you want to get all the wax off of here because it's gonna you know you're pulling it out of all that wax and it's gonna leave some of the wax on the surface of your fabric so rinse it with some warm water and then go in with the cold to get all the rest of the dye out of your fabric so that's kind of what I noticed that's the technique I used I feel like their technique would work fine too because it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be and you know my colors stayed fine and you get a little bit of bleeding but that like adds to the effect of it so i thought it turned out really well and i just i enjoyed trying something new <laughs> i'm not exactly sure what i'm gonna do with all of these they're very vibrant colors which isn't necessarily my decor style so i'll have to figure out something to do with them so if you have suggestions of what i could use these for or with or whatever, please put them down in the comments because I'd love to hear some of your ideas. And they do have some ideas in here as well. And so you can look at those <laughs> if you want. That's where I got the headband idea or they have it for like a dog. And so I still might try to make it a headband. We'll see, we'll see if that works out. 
but I, I enjoyed it and I'm very excited to get next month's craft and to see what see what that one has to teach me because I've been learning so much the last few months and doing things I have never tried before. So if you enjoy seeing these videos, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.